back today with a new episode of The Good, The Bad, and The Amigurumi. In today's episode, we're going to be diving into an older but well-loved Amigurumi book, and that is The Animal Friends of Pikapau by Jan Schenkel, Volume 1. <laughs> I will be giving you my full and honest review on this classic Amigurumi book. I'll be talking about what I love, what I don't love, and whether I think you should pick this one up if you haven't already. I will also be sharing all of the friends that I personally have made from this Amigurumi book. And there's quite a few since I've had this book in my collection for a couple of years. But first, let's go ahead and get into the specifics of this book. Animal Friends of Pika Pau Volume 1 is a collection of animal Amigurumi patterns by the designer Jan Schenkel, also known as Pika Pau Jan over on social media. The English edition of this book was originally published by Meteor Books in November of 2017. However, correct me if I'm wrong, but I do believe the very first edition of this book was originally in Spanish and was published back in 2014. There is currently a paperback edition available on Amazon and barnesandnoble.com, as well as other various online shops. And there is also a digital version available on amigurumi.com, which is perfect for all of you lovely Ami makers who prefer digital patterns to piles of paper. One awesome detail for this beloved Ami Gurumi book is that it is available in seven languages, English, Spanish, Italian, French, German, Portuguese, and Dutch. However, the digital version is only available in English. At the time of recording this video in May of 2024, the book retails for $16.80 US on Amazon.com and the digital copy on Amigurumi.com is $12.95. I purchased my copy on Amazon back in June of 2021. That's when I first started crocheting. And I remember seeing it at Barnes and Noble and wanting it really badly, but I was too afraid that my skills were not quite up to where they needed to be to make some of these darling animals. But then about a day or two later, I decided I had to have it, so I ordered it on Amazon. And I've been in love ever since. This is one of my all-time favorite Ami books. It's in the top two, for sure. I love this book so much. It is so meaningful, it is so special, and Ugh, I can't wait to talk about this one with you. Let's take a moment to learn a little bit about Jan Schenkel. Now I did get all of this information from her Amazon bio and I would highly recommend looking more into her accomplishments because there are so many that I didn't list here and they're all equally amazing. Yanina Schenkel is an Amigurumi designer from Argentina. In college, she studied art and design and while commuting to class, that's when she learned how to crochet. In 2009, she mixed her adorable animal illustrations with the 3D structure of crochet and Pika Pau was born. In addition to crochet design, Jan has illustrated children's books, designed crochet stop motion ads, and is also a collaborator for many crochet magazines and other various Amigurumi books. Her bio also states that she is the mother of three children and four cats. In addition to Animal Friends of Pika Pau Volume 1, Jan is also the author of El Mundo de Pika Pau, as well as Animal Friends of Pika Pau Volumes 2 and 3. Diving inside the book, we have 159 pages of animal goodness and a total of 20 colorful animal characters. Now, the first thing you might notice about this book is the gorgeous photography done by Jan herself, as well as Matthias Gorgostegi. I did want to also note that all the illustrations of the darling little animals you see are in fact done by Yan herself. Now, Meteor books all have a very similar layout to them, but I'm gonna go ahead and dive into the specifics anyway, just in case you have never purchased a Meteor Amigurumi book before. There is this awesome anatomy of a crochet hook page right at the beginning of the book, which offers excellent information for new and experienced crocheters alike, including hook specifics like the point, throat, shaft, and thumb rest, as well as hook size conversions. There is so much amazing information at the beginning about different fibers and materials, other essentials to the crocheting process, and an excellent crochet instruction section for those who have never held a hook before. If you are brand new to crochet or amigurumi making, this book covers all of the basics you will need to know before you begin. So if you're one of those folks who likes written instructions, this one has got you covered. 
There's also a ton of photos showing a number of stitches and techniques. So even if you have crocheted before, but you need a refresher on a certain stitch, you have that instruction right there. It also goes over the details of working in spirals as well as how to make a magic ring. There's instructions on finishing off, how to join pieces, as well as how to read a pattern. Truly, you can learn everything you need to know from the beginning pages of this book. One of my favorite things about this book and other similar meteor books is the Amigurumi Gallery. I love to flip to one page in the book and see all of my options for toys. It's much easier for me to find and pick which darling character I'm going to create versus flipping through the entire book to see what patterns are available. I also love the QR code for the gallery. When you scan this with your phone, it will pull up a gallery of that specific character and you can see all the amazing variations and projects other crocheters have created. I love to look at other creators' use of color and technique, and it really is a cool way to see what other amigurumi makers and crochet artists have done with that particular pattern. This book is in US terminology, and one thing to note about these patterns is that Yan does like to use the yarn under method when making her amis. This creates an X shape to her stitches instead of the typical V shape, which makes the stitches tighter and a little more neat. Personally, I do not use the yarn under method. I have tight enough tension as it is. And since I do crochet things other than amigurumi, I do find it hard to kind of flip my brain back and forth between the yarning over and yarning under techniques. As you will see when it comes to my amigurumi, all of these adorable animals can be made using the yarn over technique and they turn out just as cute in my opinion. If you are interested in learning the yarn under technique, there are some amazing YouTube videos out there and they will surely help to answer any questions you might have. Now that we've learned a little bit more about the physical book itself, as well as Yan, let's dive into my favorite part of these videos, the good. So what do I love about the Animal Friends of Pika Pau? Um, <laughs> quite a lot. First and pretty importantly, these patterns are all written correctly. I have never once encountered any mistakes in any of these patterns, which is really important, especially if you are a new crocheter or amigurumi maker. Jan's patterns are also very straightforward and to the point. You're not gonna be flipping back and forth to the stitch glossary to figure out what you're supposed to do. There might be a couple of more advanced techniques such as tapestry crochet. You're gonna need to know a couple of bobble stitches as well as chaining in the beginning and then joining them to make a ring. But other than that, nothing too extreme or nothing that's gonna make you pull out your hair because you're trying to decipher what the pattern is saying. Another thing I really love about these patterns, and we're gonna use Murray the sea otter here, is the size of them. I love a good medium size amigurumi. Sure, I love to have little miniatures and keychains and things, but I'm not really a big fan of giant amigurumi, but these here are the perfect size, I think, for a crocheted toy. They're not too big, they're not too small, and they're just so sweet. Also, the variety of the animals is amazing. Sure, you might find a bear and a frog in the book, but there's adorable patterns like puffins and woodpeckers and donkeys, sea otters and panda bears. The variety of animals is truly excellent in this first volume. Another thing I love about these patterns is how iconic these characters are. When you look at them, you know they are a Jan Schenkel pattern. Most of them do have the striped shirts and cute little accessories. And the way that Jan constructs the bodies and things, you can just look at them and know it's her pattern. And you'll see the similarities in the legs and things when I show you all of the Amis that I have made. I love it when an amigurumi designer can really show their skill in design and you know it's their pattern when you look at it. That is one of my favorite things when it comes to designers. 
and Yan is the queen of that. One thing I do like about these patterns is the head and the body are constructed in one piece. There is no sewing on the head, which is awesome, especially if you have details like this, where if you don't get it matched up, the head might be a little crooked and it might be kind of noticeable. And let's be real, sewing is not my favorite thing, so the less that I can do, the better. And let's talk about the adorable backstories of these characters. Oh my goodness, one of my favorite things about the Pika Pau characters, if not my favorite thing about the Pika Pau characters, is their backstories. Murray, the sea otter here, loves Jacques Cousteau. You can tell because he has his little yellow vest on and I think it is adorable. I love it when designers come up with backstories for their characters because I love to imagine them in these scenarios that she makes up for us. And it really adds personality to each and every character. And I tend to get a little attached to them, even though they're just crocheted toys, because I know their backstory, because I hear about their family and their wants and their dreams. And it's just, it's such a nice touch that really makes me happy and makes crocheting these toys really fun. I did have to close my blinds. It was getting a little bright in here. <laughs> the sun is setting and holy cow, the sun was shining. But back to the good. And the last thing I wanted to talk about when it comes to the good of Pika Pau Volume 1 is there is a good mix of levels of the Amigurumi. So there's a couple of beginner patterns, there is some intermediate ones, and then there are some more advanced patterns. And it does indicate the skill level on each pattern. So if you're new to Amigurumi, you can flip through, find the one star patterns, and you know that that is a more beginner level pattern and something that you should be able to crochet. Now, many of you have actually asked if there's anything about the Pika Pau patterns that I don't like. And well, there are actually. Even though it's one of my all-time favorite Amigurumi books, there are a couple of things that I don't like about these patterns that I would change if I could. But I do wanna give a quick disclaimer. When I say bad, I just mean these are things that personally I don't prefer to do when crocheting. Everyone crochets differently. Everyone has learned to crochet differently. So these are entirely my preferences and what I don't like, but they might be some things that you really enjoy, which is great. No judgment here. Everyone has their opinions and their preferences when it comes to crochet and it's all valid. So one of the first things I wanna talk about when it comes to the patterns is some of the instructions do leave much to be desired as far as the amount of instruction that you get. For example, some of the patterns will say, sew the ears to the top of the head. That's all the instruction you get. Now for me, that's fine, it's okay. But if you like very detailed instructions about where on the head to place the ears, that might be a little frustrating for you. I'm gonna go ahead and use the poncho of one of my characters I'm gonna talk about in a second as an example as well. So when you are making the poncho, it does tell you to add tassels to the bottom, but it only says finish the poncho by adding some fringes. So you really have to be creative and you really have to look at a lot of the pictures to kind of decipher what that instruction is saying. Now that might be great for somebody who's super creative and likes to just go with the flow, but I feel there's a lot of crocheters out there who really like to be taken step by step through a pattern. In addition to the lack of detail, there's a lot of patterns that lack photos. I love an Ami book that is just bursting with progress photos. That way I can tell if what I'm making is looking how it's supposed to. But for example, this character again, you crocheted a tail for him, but the tail is nowhere to be seen in any of the photos. So I had no clue if I crocheted the tail correctly. It is what it is and that's that character's tail now. <laughs> So if you're like me and you do look a lot to photos to just make sure you're doing it the right way, mm, you might miss something because there's not a ton of photos for some of these patterns. Also, there can be a bit of sewing when it comes to the characters. So going back to Murray the Sea Otter here, you do sew on his arms. 
you sew on his tail. And I believe you sew on his ears as well. I can't remember, it's been a while since I've made him. But yeah, some of these patterns, there can be quite a bit of sewing. So if you're not a big fan of sewing, mm, these ones might not be the best choice. Now remember how I said one of the good things about these patterns is that the head and the body are all one piece? I still do think that that is really great, but in addition to the head and the body being one piece, a lot of times the legs are one piece as well. So you will continue down the body, you will make one leg, and then you will finish off with the last leg. And for a character like Murray here, it's not that big of a deal. But you'll see some of the characters have very long legs, but to go back and crochet that second leg is really infuriating for me. Here you can see I'm just having a heck of a time getting around that first leg to crochet the second one. As much as I don't like to sew, I feel like I would rather just make the legs separately and sew them on at the end versus having to maneuver around these giant legs of some of these characters. It really does get overwhelming sometimes. So if that also sounds like a nightmare for you, I would maybe stick to some of the characters that have these shorter legs. It is a much easier time to crochet with just a little nub in your way versus a super long limb. But now that we've talked about the good and the bad, let's go ahead and get into the Amigurumi or all of the Pika Pal characters I have made from volume number one. Now, as I said, I've had this book since June of 2021. And so some of these characters are very old and we're at the very start of my crochet journey. And there is one character that I actually don't have anymore because he was a gift, but we'll talk about him in a moment. So I'm gonna go ahead and talk about these characters in order of how I made them. So the very first character I made in June of 2021, that was maybe a couple of weeks after I learned how to crochet, and that was Renee the Cayman here. <laughs> I started with Renee because he is listed as an easy pattern and he is so cute. As soon as I made him, my kiddo became obsessed with him. And so he is definitely a little worn, a little loved. He's got a little bit of staining going on. Some ends have popped out. His head is definitely pretty wiggly. Um, I think just all the years of you know, the stuffing getting slept with and stuff like that. It's just kind of losing its stiffness, but I do love Renee. His backstory is really cute. So he was really self-conscious about his fashion until one day he learned to not care anymore and he's gonna dress however he wants to. And so that's why he wears his favorite outfit every day, which includes his striped shirt, of course, as well as his bow tie and his birthday hat. He just loves his birthday hat so much he wants to wear it every day because it makes him happy. And I think that is so cute. So again, I crocheted him very early on in my crochet journey. I do feel like I picked up crochet relatively quickly, but if you are interested in making some of these patterns and you are a beginner, I would say start off with Renee here and you might have as much success as I did. Now he is the only character that I did the eyes a little bit differently. So at this time, I really wanted my eyes to be representative of my illustrations that I do. And so I added the little whites of his eyes and some colored safety eyes. I do love that look and I don't know why I haven't done it since because I do think it's really cute. But yeah, there he is, Renee. He has been well loved and he will continue continue to be well loved. Oh my goodness, such a special place in my heart for Renee since he was the very first Pika Pow friend that I made. The second Pika Pow friend that I made, I made about two months later and that is Pedro Von Dito Pig. Again, I don't have him anymore just because he was a gift for some family. I have a family member who loves pigs and we were actually on our way to a beach vacation with this family member. And so I thought this was a cute little gift to kind of get everybody bumped up for our beach vacation. So I made Pedro here because he has his little pool floaties. He's a pig, it was just perfect. I love Pedro Von Dito Pig. I think he's one of my favorite patterns in the book just because of how cute he is with his little floaties and just everything about Pedro is so sweet. That is a pattern that I would love to make again. And who knows, maybe I'll crochet him up again before the end of the year. 
So the next one that I made is Hans the Grizzly Bear here. Now Hans is different than all of my other Pika Pau characters because Comparing him to Rene the Cayman, he is the only Pika Pau friend that I did not use Barocco Vintage to crochet. I just used some worsted weight cotton, and so he did turn out a little bit bigger than all of the rest. But I love him. I think Hans is so cute. I have taken him to all of my craft fairs that I've ever done, and no one's once looked at Hans and I don't know why. Between his darling little cap and his scarf and vest here, I think he is so cute. I did also use one of my noses that I got that was in the set of safety eyes that I first bought off of Amazon. You probably have that set as well that has all of the little noses in it. There's like a pink one and stuff. <laughs> so I did use that for him instead of embroidering his nose. And I think that also turned out really cute. He's a good example of one of those characters with really long legs that makes it really hard to crochet around. But regardless, Hans the Grizzly Bear is so sweet sweet and I'm so happy I made him when I did and I love how he turned out cotton and all. Next up we have Murray the sea otter again. So cute. I went back to the Barocco vintage. So he was actually recommended by a viewer on my Twitch streams. Every now and then when I don't know what to crochet, I will flip through a book and ask people in chat which one I should make. And they recommended the otter because why not? Otters are super cute, especially ones that are obsessed with Jacques Cousteau. So yeah, he turned out really fun. If I remember correctly, he worked up fairly quickly and I needed this color of yarn for him and I didn't have it. So I discovered a yarn store near me that I really enjoyed that sells Barocco Vintage. And now I know where to go and get some Barocco Vintage if I run out and don't have time to order online. So the next four Pika Pau friends, I actually have crocheted all this year. One of my new year's resolutions is to crochet a new Pika Pau friend every month of the year. So by the end of 2024, I'll have 12 new Pika Pau friends that I have made. Now I crocheted Victor Frog here in February and I've just been obsessed with this first book ever since and I love him. Now I did say that I forgot to give him a mouth and I asked you guys what you thought if I should give him a mouth or not and you guys said yes, I should give him a mouth but I haven't yet. <laughs> I'm sorry, Victor. It's been a busy year already. This one is super fun because his little uh, swimming trunks come off and he has these polka dotted undies, which I think is so cute. Let's get you dressed again, Victor. I'm sorry, I pants you in front of everybody. I apologize. But one thing I really love about these patterns is his little fingers. <laughs> I don't know why I think that is so funny. Oh, I love it. I love that little detail of his little fingers. So cute. I did make Victor here in February because it was a leap year. And like I said, he kicked off my obsession with this first book again. So I'm so happy that I chose to make him. So then the next friend that I made was in March and this is Harry Wolf. I wanted to make Harry Wolf from the very first time I laid eyes on Pika Pau and I finally did a few months ago. I think he turned out so cool. I love the gray color that I chose. I think it's just perfect. I thought he was gonna take a really long time to crochet up, but he didn't. He worked up relatively quickly. He has this darling little tail and his little mittens, which are so cute. They do pop off if you want them to. I keep them on because you know, He's a hipster and he's got to wear his mittens. <laughs> he is very special to me. I probably won't sell him ever. He will probably be a part of my collection forever. And so yeah, love Harry Wolf. Much like Harry Wolf, when I first got volume one, I saw this pattern and I said, I need to make that Ami right now. However, I was really anxious about tapestry crochet because I hadn't done it yet and so I decided to put it off. Almost three years later I finally got around to it and here's our little poncho wearing friend that I was talking about earlier. This is Ramon the donkey. If I owned a home with a ton of space like a lot of land, sure chickens and goats and bees and all that stuff, yeah they're fun. I would get a donkey in two seconds. That would be the only animal I needed in my life 
was a donkey. I love donkeys so much. When we went to Arizona, there is this place called Oatman that has just these wild burrows just hanging around and I was in heaven. I love donkeys. <laughs> and so I was so happy to finally make Ramon. Uh, he is pretty large though. So actually having him compared to Hans here, he's pretty big. I thought maybe the cotton of Hans made him the biggest one that I've made, but no, no, Ramon the donkey, he's the biggest one I've ever made. And he is so cute. I love him. He's also made out of Barocco vintage. So it wasn't the yarn that made him big. He just is a large Ami. He didn't take too long to make. I thought his poncho would take longer than it did. And again, he does have a little tail. I don't know if that's how it's supposed to look, but there it is. <laughs> and I love his little hair on top. I think it is so cute. So I love Ramon. He is one that I've wanted to make for so long and I'm so happy I finally did. He is one much like Harry Wolf that he'll probably be in my collection forever just because I love him so much. Which brings me to the last Pika Pal friend that I have made from volume one. So that is a total of eight Pika Pal friends that I have crocheted out of the 20 patterns. Much like Harry Wolf and Ramon the Donkey, this is a pattern when I saw it, I said I have to make that character and that is Hugo Bat. <laughs> He is so funny. I love him. He is large, but not height. He is definitely more width. <laughs> he's got these awesome wings. Absolutely love it. And he's got this sweet little scarf with the pom-poms on the end. So fun. I love the blue that I use to crochet him. Now Hugo doesn't like to be called a bat. He prefers to be called a flying fox, which I mean, just look at that face, so cute. His muzzle, now I'm looking at it, it's a little crooked, but you know what, that's okay. You know what, Hugo? My smile can be pretty crooked sometimes too, so it's fine, it's no big deal. I just think he is so sweet. I really struggled with if I wanted to add this part to his ears, I wasn't going to add that middle part, but I decided to go ahead and do it just because it's part of the pattern, I'm reviewing the book, and I think I am happy that I put those in there. I think it turned out really cute, but overall, I just love the color combo of Hugo Bat here. I think he is so sweet. I love the yellow and the blue. I love the light blue of his wings. He's got his little stubby legs too, which is really fun. Now I did use a different crochet hook to crochet him. I went up a size to my three millimeter tulip hook and I probably won't do that again. You can see his stuffing through there, which I don't think you can see in any of the other ones. I think I typically use a 2.75 with my Barocco Vintage, and maybe it's just this tulip hook as well. I don't know, but for whatever reason, his stitches are a little bit more wide, so you can see some of the stuffing, but that's okay, no big deal. Still love him. He is so cute so happy. Bats are one of my favorite animals. I have so many kind of bat related clothing and bags and things just because they're so cool, especially the flying foxes. So I'm happy I finally was able to make you go. Which leads us to my final thoughts. Do I recommend Animal Friends of Pika Pow Volume 1? And the answer is yes, absolutely, 100%. How can I not? So I think if you have never crocheted before, you're wanting to buy this book and you're asking yourself or you're asking me, Sonnet, do I buy Animal Friends of Pika Pow Volume 1? The answer is yes, do it. One thing I really like about this book and I think is really kind of interesting is this book could easily challenge a beginning amigurumi maker crocheter to really step out of their comfort zones, maybe not make so many jellyfish or whales and try something a little bit scary. A pattern like Renee the Cayman here, although seeming a little intense, might surprise you. Now you do have to know how to change colors. So if you haven't mastered color changes yet, maybe do a couple more beginner, ultimate beginner Amis that require you to change colors. Get that muscle memory under your belt and then I think do it try a Pika Pow character. If you are an experienced crocheter or amigurumi artist and you don't have this book yet, I say pick it up. 
It's so sweet. These characters are so amazing and it's such an incredible tool to have. But that's all I have to say about that. Let me know, do you own this book? What are your favorite patterns from this book? How many Pika Pow friends have you made from volume one? And do you like the other books as well? I'm always looking for new books to review for you guys. So if you have any suggestions of books that you wanna see for our next episode of The Good, The Bad, and The Amigurumi, be sure to leave those down in the comments below. And if you have a moment free and you'd like to hit the thumbs up button and like this video, that would be super awesome. <laughs> and if you haven't yet and you wanna be Amigurumi, Gurumi making friends, please consider subscribing. But I just want to say I love you all so much. You are so wonderful. And I will see you all a little later. Bye.